Functools.partial is a relatively little known part of Python that allows you to create partial functions instead of lambdas or named functions that are based on other functions. There are a number of cases where partial functions are more readable than the alternatives and actually they can be quite a bit faster as well to execute. And while they are very simple, you can do some pretty crazy things with them too. If you like this video, then make sure to leave a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. But with all that out of the way, let's see what these partials are all about. So to actually start using partial, we can do from func tools import partial. And then I'm going to use um, a doubling function to show this off. But I'm going to have def malt here that takes x. And we're going to keep it simple and just use integers. Uh, and then we've got to return x uh, multiplied by y. I'm fully aware that I can import mole from operator to do the same thing, but I want to be you know, a bit more explicit when I'm explaining certain things. So we're defining it ourselves. So we could, if we wanted to, create a double function that took x as an int and returned an int uh, that returned malt uh, x2. And what this will do is it will multiply our input number by two, essentially doubling it. So if we were to do if name double equals main like that, and then we print uh, double five, uh, we will get as my <laughs> as the terminal kind of spoiled there, we get 10 because it just multiplies the thing by two. It's not a difficult concept to understand. But if you didn't want to define a whole new function for that, you could use partials instead. So we could do a double equals partial, and then we provide a, a function, so malt, and then we provide any number of arguments. So we're going to provide two. And what this will do is it will create a, a partial function, you can think of it as. So it creates a function with two already passed to it. So when we call the double function, two will be set to x, and then we're just passing something to y. So you can sort of think of it like if I undo this one and then reverse the logic, you can sort of think of it as exactly the same as this. So if we were to then run it, we would see we get 10 back. And this just saves you from having to create a whole new function with type signatures and everything, and then you know, do all this when you can just do a single line thing. And it actually preserves the type hints. You can see it registers as a partial that returns an integer. If I were to get rid of all this and do it again, you could see that it recognizes that not only is it an integer, but it's the parameter y. So it's actually able to use malt's function signature to generate its own function signature for the partially initialized function, which is really cool. On top of being more readable, in my opinion, and certainly a lot more convenient in a number of instances, it's actually a little bit quicker to create a partial function than it is to create a brand new function. And I've created this benchmark to show that off. So in our first test here, we have our double fight. It's exactly the same thing as before but we have a lambda x and then you know what, for the sake of full uh, kind of uh, full parity, I guess, uh, we will uh, do it in the same way that partial would. So we create a lambda function and then we multiply two by y. And in this case, we are importing operator or mole from operator. In this case, down here for the partial, we are importing partial. And then we create a partial function much like we did in the other script. And then we just print the results down here. And then if I do that benchmark, we can see that partial is about 1.6 times faster to run. I will say it is a little bit slower to create a partial function than it is to create a Lambda, but executing it is actually on average 1.6 times faster, at least for this particular function. Uh, the reason for that, I am really honestly not sure. If anyone does know why partials are more optimized then do let me know in the comments. I believe it's because it's not actually creating a whole function. It's just using a function and then creating a class to execute it or something. Um, you'd think that would make it slower, really? Creating a whole class rather than just a function. But then a function is an object. I don't know. If anyone knows, do let me know. Um, but it is, it is faster to run. It is consistently faster to run as well. So for something like this, as I said, 1.6 times faster. If you wanted to use partials for methods instead, then you could. So as you can see, I've set up our previous example inside a class. If we import partial method from here, we put partial method down here, and then we indent this to be a member of the class, 
and then I'm just going to create a quick instance uh, test dot double. We can, I don't know why this is complaining at me. Uh, oh yeah, we need a self. That would help. Uh, but now if we run that, uh, so scripts, we can see that it runs the same thing. So we've now created a partial method within our class. So those are the basics of partial method. I do want to show one more thing, and this is one of the crazier things you can do with a partial. The partials are already very situational, I will admit, but you can do some wild things. And one of them is an optionally parameterized decorator. So what I mean by that is a decorator you can call with or without the brackets. So if we go into decorator here, and I'm just gonna copy and paste this all in. Uh, so this is from the decorators video. I haven't copied it at all, that was weird. Uh, this is from the decorators video I did last week. If you are unfamiliar with decorators, I recommend you go and watch that. So currently the only way that we can call this decorator is like this without the brackets. If we did do the brackets, then it would crash. You can, you can actually see it's gonna error here. Um, saying that it's missing a positional argument call. However, if we wanted to make it so we could do that, we could uh, pass, we could say that func equals none by default. And in here, uh, if func is none, and I realize now I need to import partial, then we can return a partial of timer with all our other arguments. So let's say we had an argument here uh, that was for both. Uh, and then we did verbose equals verbose like that. And then our verbose behavior, I'm just going to copy paste this from my notes. We just say, you know, if verbose, we omit when it started and then when it ended. Like that. Uh, you could still run it like this and it would run perfectly fine. You could also run it like this and it would run perfectly fine. You could also run it with verbose equals true. And it would oh, it would help if it actually printed anything. Why is it not printing anything? <laughs> oh, I'm running the wrong bloody thing. That's why. We decorated. There you go. Uh, so we have our started at and our ended at times. If I just go through again. So if you run it like this, we could see it runs perfectly fine. If you run it like this, we can see that it also runs perfectly fine. And that is just the power of partials. Now, the one caveat to this is you are limited to keyword arguments if you want something that is kind of a bit more predictable. You could probably do it with a function uh, or you probably you could probably do it with arguments if you were to check if the function was a function and if it wasn't, then do this. Otherwise, otherwise pass things through, but that just gets a bit messy um, on... <laughs> on a programming paradigm that is probably not recommended anyway. Um, but yeah, this is just one of the fun things you can do you know, with a partial if you wanted to. Let me know in the comments what programming problems you've come across that a partial would be really useful to solve now that you know about it. If you do want to learn more about decorators, including how to create parameterized decorators, like actual parameterized decorators, and how to type them properly, then I did a video all about decorators last week that you can go and watch. And I'll see you in the next one for whatever we do next.